This is a fun thing I did in my class today, and I thought I'd add it to my DevNet series of videos. So in the DevNet series of videos, we're learning to program using Python, but a really fun tool to use is Blockly, and especially the Blockly code editor that Google has given us. So let's take a look at this Blockly code editor and play around with it, and you'll see how cool it is. So what you wanna do is, you want to go to blockly-demo.appspot.com. So I'll put the link in the description to the video. Once again, blockly-demo.appspot.com. And then scroll all the way down to these Blockly tools and click on the code editor. And it will look like this. Now this is a Blockly code editor. But what's nice about it is, is that you can create your code using the blocks here and then see how the code would convert into JavaScript, Python, PHP, Lua, Dart, or XML. So let's mess around, let's do something. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna write a little, um, a little program, a little script that will calculate the area and then we'll put it into a function. And this week we're learning about functions. So this is, this is important, this is cool, this, is, this will be fun. So we'll click on variables and we'll create a variable. And the first variable will be, let's say, width. And I'll click OK. And now I've got a variable called width. And I can then drag this out here and set width to, and then we could set width to something. But before I do that, I'm gonna create another variable. So I'll click on variables and I'll create a variable again. And this one will be height. I'll click OK. And now I've got a height variable, and then I can drag this one out. So set width to set height to. And what I wanna do is, is I'm gonna set it to a number. Um, I can just manually set the width variable to a number, or set the height variable to a number, or I could set it to a string, but in this case, I want an integer. But I wanna ask the user to provide us with that information. So I'm gonna go to text, and I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. And there's a prompt for text with message. So here's a user input prompt. So we'll drag that out, we'll put that there. And then I'll just do a control C and a control V. I can copy and paste and put that there. And so set width to prompt for a number with the message, what is the width? And then I'll prompt for a number here for the height, and I'll say, what is the height? And then a question mark. Okay, so this should prompt us to provide that information. So right away, I could say, all right, play, and it's gonna prompt me, what is the width? And I could say five, and click okay. What is the height? And I could say six, and click okay, and that's it, the program's done. Now, since I asked for a number, what happens if it's play and it says, what is the width? And I type, I don't know. And click OK, right? It took it, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted a number. So that's something to think about there. All right, moving on. We wanted that number. We're going to get a number. All right, next, go to variables. We're going to create another variable and we're going to call this variable total. So now we have a variable called total, and we're going to pull that out. So set total to, and then we want to do some math operations here. We want to add the width variable and the height variable together. So we want to add the width and height, or not add them, multiply them, and maybe we can get the area. We'll multiply them and get the area. So I'll click on math, and we can see this one right here looks like what we need. So I'll drag that out. So set total to one plus one. Well, we're gonna to wanna to use multiplication, so I can click that and change that to multiplication. Instead of the number one and the number one here, I bet you I can drag the width variable and the height variable into these placeholders. So we'll go to variables and see there's, there's width. And I'll go to variables again and there's height. Okay, and then I could just drag those and put them right in place right there. So now the total variable will be set to the width times the height. So we'll put that right there. So now we've got 
three sequential items in or, or three sequence of statements in our program. Then we're going to want to print something. So some text, let's print something. So print the, the area is, okay, and then we'll print again. So text, we want to print again. Print, the area is, and then we want total here. We don't want ABC. So we want to print our total, whatever the, the total variable is. So we'll go to variables, grab total, drag it out, put it right there. So that should work. So now we have a little, a little quick program that's going to calculate the area. Width gets set and height gets set by the user. The total variable gets turned to the multiplication of width times height. And then we print out the area is and the total. So let's try it. We'll run it. We'll say, what is the width? Four. OK. What is the height? 12. Click OK. And it says the area is, and if we click OK, 48. So it's working. So we have our little program. Now, what if we wanted, what if we're creating a, a big program that's calculating a bunch of different areas for something and we want to write this code, we need to calculate the area more than once in our program. Well, instead of having to write one, two, three, four, five lines of code over and over again, that's why we create a function. Uh, a, fl a function is a way of putting our code into a block or a module that we can reuse. You know, a function is a reusable block of code, a reusable block of code. So what we'll do is we'll go to functions and we'll pull out this, this one right here. And this is the function construct here. And we'll say, we need to basically, if you click here, describe this function, we put a description of it. And here it says, you know, input name. So it's two pieces to this, the function, and then you call the function. So I gotta give this sucker a name though. First, let me close these. So we'll call this uh, function area. So this will give us the area. And there we go. So there's the function. Then I can just take this whole thing and put it into our function. So now we've taken the whole program and put it inside of a function called area. However, if I hit play, nothing happens because now the, the program, these sequence of statements are in the function area. So if we want to, we have to run the function. So we have to call the function. So we click on functions and now we have this little area chip. So we pull that out here and now we can call area. So this is the block of code, our function, and this is this will call it and we'll hit play and you can see it works. What is the width? Two. What is the height? Three. The area is six. Okay, so there you have it. There it is. Now the fun part is, well, what if you wanted to see what would this blockly little program look like in JavaScript. There it is in JavaScript. Um, this is how you could write it in Python. It's a little bit wordy for Python. Um, probably could do it a lot in a lot fewer lines of code. Um, uh, some PHP, this is PHP, Lua, Dart, and then get ready to be scared. This is scary, but you could actually create that program in uh, XML markup language uh, but it's not going to be pretty. It looks like this. Yeah, you wouldn't want to write that, I don't think. Imagine if it was a longer program, what would this look like? Oh my goodness. All right, so anyway, uh, there it is though in these different um, languages. And there's the blocks. Then when you're done, what you can do is you click over here and you hit save, which is this link, and it'll give you a link that will call up the program. So you just need to basically copy that and then you can revisit it. And the important part here is the uh, 5TGFHJ. So that's where it'll be stored. So you just wanna copy that link and then you can come back to it and it'll be saved.